Welcome to Vintage SF and perhaps my biggest book haul ever. Last month, I volunteered at the Children's Hospital Book Market. It is a book sale that is held in one of our largest shopping centers here in Winnipeg. There are tables set up in the hallways and meeting areas, and books of all genres are available. I was volunteering in the SF section, of course. There is also a very large fantasy section. In a previous video, I showed some of the books in the SF section, but I didn't show any of the fantasy section. For you fantasy fans, know that there was probably two to three times as many books in fantasy. There was also a table for series in Star Wars and Star Trek. So besides donating my time, I also made a purchase of some used books. In this book haul video, I wanna do things a little differently. I've ordered the books in terms of price listed. So we're gonna start with the lowest price and go to the highest price. And then I'm also gonna tell you what my grand total was. The only reason I'm doing it this way is I want you to see what a great deal it is to shop at the Children's Hospital book market. The next one will be in April, 2025. Many of you who've watched the channel know that one of the first authors that I was collecting way back when I was a teenager is John Wyndham. And so I have some early works of his. This is a Fawcett Gold Medal, 75 cents. John Wyndham stole away to Mars. There is also a former title, Planet Plane. One dollar. All the books coming up right now are going to be one dollar. And this is the copyright from 1935. Very good condition. I wonder if this book was even read. I've collected John Wyndham's books in different publishers, and there's a great series from Coronet of his early work. One of which I just showed you was Still Away from Mars. That's my Coronet version of that one. But I also have these three here. Exiles on Asperus, Wanderers of Time, and Sleepers of Mars. And you can see that John Wyndham was using a pseudonym John Bainan for these three. Bainan is one of his middle names. These are books I already had, but at the sale, I found a couple of books, one an upgrade and one in addition to this publisher's series. The addition is The Secret People. And the upgrade is to Exiles on Asperus. I'll take a look here. You can see my previous copy. I had a bent cover on it. Otherwise, it's not bad shape. I'll put this into my box where I trade with friends or it may be a donation to the Children's Hospital book market. So this is the one that I'll keep. As you see, it's $1. Great condition. And so there now are my Coronet set. This is also the new one here. And once again, it looks like a book that hasn't been read. The publication date for this specific one here, this is the 10th impression from 1981. So this is a little bit over 40 years old. The other one that I just purchased, this is a 1979 edition. When I was at the sale, I was asking one of my friends, Jules Burt, whether he had this book, The Best of Jack Williamson. I already have a copy of this book for myself. Ira at SF Words of Wonder and Matt at Science Fiction Reads and I we go through this series, and once in a month or six weeks, we read one of these and have a chat together on one of our channels. So I'll be getting this to my friend Jules Burt. In the first Ace Science Fiction Specials, Series 1, I read this book, Warlord of the Air by Michael Moorcock. 
is actually the first in a series. I was able to find book two and book three. There's Land Leviathan. This is the second volume in the Oswald Bastable trilogy. So this is copyright 1974. This is from Mayflower Science Fiction. The previous one had been an ace book from the United States, and this one is a daw book from the United States. This is the third in the series, The Steel Czar. If you're counting the daw numbers, it's number 503. Nice yellow spine on this one. Copyright 1981. So there we have the Oswald Bastable trilogy, each one by a different publisher. We're still in the $1 range. Recently, I read a book by Charles L. Harness. It was The Paradox Men. I was impressed by it so much that when I saw these in the Vintage SF region, I decided to pick them up. This one's called The Rose from Panther Science Fiction. This was $1.00. I don't know which city that store would be in. Copyright 1968, this Panther edition 1969. And Red World. Science and religion, rival powers holding equal sway. Could one man shift their balance and change the world? I like the cover art on this one. This is a DAW book. Copyright 1986. And this is DAW Collector Book 670. Somewhere after 500 in the DAW numbering system, they went away from the yellow spines. My friend Kenny is attempting to get all the yellow spine DAWs. You can check them out on his channel at Kenny RH. Algis Budras, The Falling Torch. Two men against the galaxy's most powerful armies. Once again, we're in the $1 range. Copyright is 1959. This is the sixth printing in August of 1974. Edmund Cooper, Transit. A man without purpose on a voyage of discovery. This is a cornet book. Copyright 1964. This is the second impression in 1974 by Coronet. The Worlds of A.E. Van Vogt. I like the cover art on this one. Featuring the first paperback publication of The Storm and The Expendables. Ah, it goes all the way around. Copyright 1974 by Ace Books. Twelve of the stories in this collection originally appeared in the 1968 collection The Far Out Worlds of A.E. Van Vogt.
John Brunner, The Squares of the City. Copyright 1965. So this is before the Jagged Orbit and Stand on Zanzibar. This is the fourth printing in 1978, and we have the cover art by Murray Tinkleman. He did a number of these books in the 60s and 70s. Penguin Science Fiction, edited by Brian Aldiss. This one has seen a little bit of wear. First published 1961, this is a reprint from 1962. And here are the contents. We've got Frank Russell, Ward Moore, John Steinbeck, Clifford Simek, Brian W. Aldiss, James H. Schmitz, Bertram Chandler, Walter M. Miller, Isaac Asimov, Catherine McLean. I don't think I've heard her name before. Algis Budras and J.G. Ballard. Looks like a good anthology. Another Penguin book, The Science Fiction of Edgar Allan Poe. One dollar. And here are our stories. This selection was first published in 1976. I've been slowly picking up some of the E&M Bank books. Some of them are culture books. This is a newer livery. This is the first culture book, Consider Phoebus, the culture novel. And it's got that red bar on the top. I'm going to keep this one out. And I also have the Hydrogen Sonata another culture novel. I believe this is close to the end. So I'm going to put these two aside for now. I was able to pick up three more culture novels. Ian M. Banks, The Player of Games. You can see that it's in the same livery. It's got this bar on the top here. There, it's an orbit book. There is a name at the top there that I'm just going to try to crop out but it was $2. And here you can see for this livery what the culture novels look like. So here we go. Just show the spines here as we move along. The state of the art. And one more, once again in the $2 range, Use of Weapons. Whenever I see this author's books at a good price, I've been picking them up. So this is my third one from Octavia E. Butler, Kindred. Harlan Ellison says, Octavia Butler, a writer who will be with us for a long, long time. And Kindred is that rare magical artifact, the novel one returns to again and again. Originally $22, but at this sale, $2. My friend Ira at SF Words of Wonder just recently profiled this series of books, the SF Rediscovery series from the 1970s. It's a numbered series, and you can see the number here on the back for this one is number eight. And I believe there are 21, perhaps. I'll put the exact number in the corner over here. 
But there's a certain number of books, and I think they were printed over a period of three or four years. This one here is Omnivore by Piers Anthony. I do like the livery of this collection. This is the third book I have in this collection. I also have these two here. The Grey Explosion by Eric Frank Russell. That one is number nine. And Needle, Hal Clement. And that one is number 20. All right, that does it for our $2 books. At least for our $2 soft cover books. Neil Stevenson, Cryptonomicon. $2. This book came out after the Diamond Age, Snow Crash, and Zodiac. Copyright 1999. This is a first Avon Books printing in May of 1999. Not bad for two dollars. Taking a step up, three dollars. Neil Stevenson's The System of the World. This is volume three of the Baroque Cycle. That works out well for me because Matt from Science Fiction Reads and I had done a trade and he had sent me Volume 1 and Volume 2. So now I have the complete Baroque cycle here in Volume 3 for $3. This one is copyright 2004, a first edition. There we go. All right, so we're up to our $3 books. Let me just get these out of the way. Next, I have a couple $4 books. I first came across this author in the A Science Fiction Special Series. The second book that I read, James H. Schmidt's The Witches of Cars, or Caras. This is a great space opera novel. Well, I have a collection of short stories called Agent of Vega and Other Stories. This is a collection by Eric Flint and Guy Gordon. This one has been well loved. There you can see $4. And here's the table of contents. So it looks like we have four stories from the Confederacy of Vega and then other stories. This is an omnibus. As you can see, it's advertising now the major motion picture, Annihilation. Here are your books. The Southern Reach Trilogy. Annihilation. Authority and Acceptance. Four dollars. Now we're moving up to five dollars. A favorite publisher of mine is Nesfa Press, New England Science Fiction Association. And I was able to find Martians and Madness, the complete SF novels of Frederick Brown. $5. 
five dollars. This is copyright 2002 by the estate of Frederick Brown. Here we have a list of the small novels contained, including their original appearances. I've read Rogue in Space. It wasn't one of my favorites of Frederick Brown's work. The other four novels I haven't read, so I'm looking forward to reading those. I did like a lot of his short stories when we read it in the best of Frederick Brown. This is an author that I've never read, but it's a well-acclaimed book. Clara and the Sun, forgive me in my attempt at this name, Kazuo Ishiguro. And as you can see, he's a winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. This one came in at $8. Copyright 2021, very recent book. This is the sixth printing. I have another $8 book, but it might surprise you that it is a paperback. The best of Philip K. Dick. I do already have a copy of this, but this is an upgrade to my copy. Eight dollars. And here are the list of his stories within. Let me just move these books. And finally, my most expensive book, Rogers Lasney's The Chronicles of Amber. This they call the Great Book of Amber. Why is it a great book? Well, we know that Roger Zelazny is a great author, but as you see here on the side, this is the complete Amber Chronicles number one through 10. So it's 10 paperbacks in here. Here you can see a list. All complete and uncut. all 1,258 pages. My most expensive purchase, $10. This book haul featured a number of amazing books. The total, $68 Canadian. Amazing value for the dollar. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about these books. Until next time, keep looking for used books and keep reading.